Hello, thanks for checking out my video. Today we're going to be working on our fine motor skills, visual motor integration skills, and some bilateral coordination skills as we make a sunflower from a paper plate, a popsicle stick, some paint, a little bit of glue, and I have these little foam cutouts here for leaves, and a little bit of black um, construction paper that we'll use for the inside of the sunflower to represent the seeds. So the first thing I think I'd like to do is to paint my popsicle stick stem green. So I'm going to remove all of the extra materials out of my way for now. Just put them off to the side. I'll use my paintbrush and the green paint and I will be looking for a dynamic tripod grasp with this paintbrush it's got a little bit of a thicker handle than your traditional writing instrument and I kind of like that it fits really nicely in my hand you can also use a brush grasp or a grasp with extended fingers those are all acceptable ways of developing some of the fine motor skills that will be transferring over into writing. So this is a good way to practice that skill. And I'm also gonna be looking for some good bilateral coordination. So stabilizing my popsicle stick as I paint it. Um, and same can be said for this container of paint here. So it's possible that I'll put the container of paint on my left side, I'm a right hand dominant person. So I have to reach across the midline of my body to reach my paint. This is also working on some good visual motor skills as I scan across my environment here to locate the popsicle stick and then my paint. So I'll keep my paint over here and I will stabilize it with my non-dominant hand, reach across my midline, get some paint on my paintbrush, and then I will do the same over here. I'm gonna reach across my midline with my non-dominant hand this time and I'm gonna stabilize my popsicle stick as I go ahead and paint my popsicle stick and you can get a little bit a little bit all over that's okay and we can just kind of switch it up a little bit reposition my hand so it's now on the top and just like that it's done so I can put my green paint off to the side and as well I can put my green popsicle stick off to the side so it can dry a little bit and I will move on to my paper plate and for my paper plate if your child has a little bit more accuracy with the painting you can cut out the paper plate first so the kind of the painting of it is a little bit more uh, tricky and you have to navigate your way around these cutouts what what will be flower petals um, if your student does not have that kind of accuracy with painting we can just go ahead and paint this first and then cut out our flower petals afterwards so that's a decision that you get to make uh, when you're working with your student so for me I think what I'd like to do is to cut out my flower petals first so I have to have, be a little bit more accurate with my paintbrush. Um, so I'm not just kind of painting all over this large target, but I'll have some smaller targets that I'll really need to be a little bit more precise with. So this is how I'm going to uh, start this exercise here, is by cutting out these little triangle shapes from my paper plate. And when you're doing that, you can add visual cues for your student so we can maybe put a dot there and then we can have a couple dotted lines and they can cut along the dotted line and we could do it one at a time so that we're not really you know competing with other visual information here so we can just do this one at a time provide a visual cue stabilize the paper plate if you're working on some postural control and upper extremity strength, you can hold the plate in the air. This will strengthen your 
deltoid muscles and provide a little bit of uh, extra strength for your upper extremity mobility. And then we are going to initiate a grasp on scissors, correctly oriented with the scissors pointing up. And we can just cut right along this visual cue and we can just practice our snipping of a vertical line. And then we'll just go all the way around cutting out a similar shape from maybe, I don't know, about five or so sections. So I'm gonna go ahead and complete that portion now. So as I was cutting out my flower petals, another really important skill is kind of figuring out how you need to reposition your hand to make the next cut. So each opportunity with these triangles was another chance for us to practice that skill. So when I make my first cut here along this line, I had to either reposition my scissor hand or I had to reposition the paper plate flower so that I can make my next cut here. So that's really an important thing to work on as we complete this activity is how how do we problem solve past this so let's work on either moving our scissors to the different angle or repositioning with our non-dominant hand or even a combination of the two is fine i think i chose the repositioning of my non-dominant hand uh, as i made these cuts so just be aware of that as you complete that portion of the activity but for now, I'm done with my scissors, so I can put those off to the side, and I can find my paintbrush again, and now I'm ready to start painting my sunflower yellow. So again, I've removed some of this area around the flower um, so that I can be a little bit more accurate with my paintbrush. If your child is not demonstrating those skills of, in, in accuracy, it's okay to leave your paper plate whole and you can just kind of paint all along the um, all along the paint or the, excuse me all along the uh, the plate but again I'm going for a little bit more accuracy here so I'm putting my paint back on my non-dominant hand side stabilizing the paint container with my non-dominant hand I'm using a dynamic tripod grasp with my paintbrush or any kind of grasp really we're looking for this kind of action here between the index finger and the thumb, this opposition, and maybe even some assistance with the middle finger or the um, ring finger here. So those are the fingers I'd like to see in opposition when holding a, a, an instrument like this. So putting my paint on my non-dominant hand side, stabilizing my flower, and then I'm going to just work on painting my flower. Just any old way is fine. Maybe you're working on horizontal strokes you can work this way. If you're working on vertical strokes, you can work from top to bottom there or bottom to top, your choice. And let's see here. We can also work on the same way that we used our non-dominant hand to reposition the paper plate for our cutting. We're gonna do the same thing as we kind of rotate this plate around so that we can finish with the paint. So be mindful of, of how we use our non-dominant hand here. That would be a very, very easy way to practice some good bilateral coordination skills. So again, I'm reaching across my midline now, my midline now over to my non-dominant hand side, repositioning the paper plate with my non-dominant hand and completing the painting. And I have one more, reposition the plate and continue painting. Go ahead and give it a little bit more yellow in there. And then I will be done with this portion of the activity. And I could put my sunflower plate off to the side just to dry for a couple minutes here as I get the rest of my materials ready to go. So I'm going to put my flower off to the side to dry. I'll just put it up here. And next for me, I think I'd like to move my paint out of the way so I don't spill that. And I'm going to get my scissors again 
And now I'm going to use my uh, black construction paper or cardstock paper. Really, whatever you have is fine. I like the cardstock or the construction paper because it's a little bit more firm than just some regular paper. Um, when it's more firm, it, it adds a little bit um, to a little bit of resistance to to the situation here, so that when we cut, it doesn't kind of flop around. It's really going to stay stay firm and help us with our cutting activity. It's going to be a little bit more stability for us. So I'm going to use my scissors and I'm just going to do a little rough cut of a circle. It doesn't have to be perfect, but what I'm looking for is non-dominant hand assistance as I make a turn around with my scissors here to make a circle. So again, we're kind of problem solving. How do we make the circle here? Do we either use pronation of the forearm and deviation at the wrist to make a circle with our scissors as we cut? Or are we going to use our non-dominant hand to really help make that uh, circle nice and, and round? And that's what I'm going to use. I'm gonna use my non-dominant hand and I can just keep my scissors pretty straight up and down and I'm just gonna slowly cut and rotate at the same time. So again, that's a great way to practice some bilateral coordination with a very simple activity. So now I have my circle cut out and I can get my scissors off to the side and I can reclaim my flower. And now I'm ready to glue my black circle into the center of my flower. So I'm ready to glue and I could use a glue stick, but I think my paint is still a little bit wet, so I don't, I don't know if my glue stick would work that well in this situation. So I'm gonna go ahead and just use regular glue. And we're back here with this twist top. This is a great opportunity for your student to practice a pincer grasp and get some good dexterity exercise here as we twist and turn the top on this glue. So again, if if you have a student who's working on these fine motor skills and maybe some dexterity, we can do that with this glue uh, top. So please allow your student to open this glue. Now that we have it open, we wanna make sure it, it does breathe a little bit because we want the glue to come out. So you can give it a good squeeze there. And we're gonna work on our graded muscle force. That's the amount of force that is appropriate to squeeze out some of this glue. So it's not too light of a squeeze where the glue's not coming out and it's also not too much of a squeeze where the top blows off and the glue goes everywhere. We wanna use just the right amount of force to squeeze out just a little bit of glue right there. And then I'm going to use my circle that I just cut out and I'll just put that right, right there in the middle. And then I will put my yellow sunflower off to the side or maybe just up top here so it can dry a little bit more. And I will get my stem that I made and these little foam cutout uh, leaves here. And I think what I'd like to do is to glue these onto my stem. So you can put them anywhere you want. I'm going to get my glue again. Another opportunity to practice my dexterity. So if it was open, you can close it and then have your student open it again. That's one way to do it. And I'm just gonna use just a little bit of glue this time. Put one there. Oops. And then I'm gonna put another one just up here. Just a little bit of glue. Just the right amount of force to squeeze the glue bottle perfectly there. And then I'm gonna, again, use the right amount of force to push this down, getting some good proprioceptive input into my hands. And I'm pretty much ready to glue on this next portion here, which will be my uh, flower. And I'm gonna glue that together just like so. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. So we just had another opportunity to close the glue for your student to then reopen it. So that's our third time that we can practice our 
manual dexterity skills or have your student practice their manual dexterity skills just by opening this up. And also, it's some good bilateral coordination. So that's a perfect way and a very simple way to initiate that kind of activity there. So we're working on our bilateral coordination and some good manual dexterity. Again, I can put this back over to the side. I can put my popsicle stick to my non or to my dominant hand side, and I can practice my bilateral coordination even further, just very simply by placing these items on opposite sides. So I'm gonna go ahead and stabilize my popsicle stick with my non-dominant hand side, squeeze out the appropriate amount of glue with my dominant hand, and I'm gonna reach across my body with my dominant hand over to my non-dominant hand side, and I'm going to get my flower, put it right in the middle of my midline here, and then I'm going to place it on top of the popsicle stick and push down. Maybe I gotta move these foot, these leaves a little bit. Might be helpful. So yeah, I guess we could put the leaves about halfway down the popsicle stick. That would be a good, good spot for them to live. And that's it. We're done with this activity. I hope you found it fun, and I hope you found the tips useful. Please feel free to contact me if you have any questions on how to implement these strategies with your student.